Hey, 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 good morning, everybody, and welcome to Talking Wellbeing TV, where we share hints, tips, and advice about the foundations of wellbeing. And you are here with Peter and Sel from Strong Healthy Women. Hey, Sel, how are you doing today? Good morning, I'm doing quite well. How are you? Yeah, great, thank you. Hey, everybody out there, how are you all? Hope you're having a fabulous, well, it's Monday here. It's probably Sunday in some other aspect parts of the world so um, I was talking I wanted to talk today a little bit about planning cell and I know it's a bit of a favorite topic of yours and I know that you set the task for some of our 28ers who are just uh, we're a week into it now and so when we did all that their phone calls with them to get them started. I know there were quite a number of them that you said, okay, here's what I want you to plan for. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what it was that you directed them through and what you wanted to, them to achieve from going into that planning stage? So a, a few of them were struggling with either to get their workouts done, um, like yep. not making them a priority. Um, others were sort of just flying by the seat of their pants as far as meals were concerned. And remember, yep. this was leading up to our 28-day challenge. So a lot of these consults were done a week, maybe two weeks prior to we actually started our transformation. Yes. And so I set them the task of um, planning. That was what they were going to be practicing leading up into the 28 days. And it was mm -hmm. all about uh, booking their workouts in and planning their meals each day so everything was ready. Um, and this was just so they could practice. We had one client who, you know, has a thousand different things going on um, coming at her all the time. So she sometimes yeah. gets to that point where she won't do any of it. And she just procrastinates yes. and procrastinates. And I understand that, yeah. Yeah, so I suggested going into Kmart, and this is where I got mine from, getting one of those monthly planners. Oh, um, yeah. And booking in what she has coming at her each week, each month, um, mm -hmm. and then making sure she books in her exercise and right. making it a priority. Because I always think that, if we have a doctor's appointment or a specialist appointment or we need to get blood taken or anything like that, we never, ever, ever skip that. We never no, go, oh, no, that's no. more important to go and do. I'll, you know, do that yeah. at another time. We keep that appointment. And we need to look at exercise in this particular case as medicine and you need mm -hmm. to keep that appointment. So you book that in into a planner. So that's what mm. I have heard today. Um on that front and then uh, on the meals front it was for another one of our 28 days it was leading up to our program because in our program remember ladies the meal plans are already set the grocery lists are already set so yeah. leading up to that 28 days it was planning her meals for the night uh, for the week and it's mm. not so much that she has to do the shopping list and all that sort of thing as well, but it was just doing that first step and saying, okay, well, on this night we're going to have this, this night we're going to have this, this night we're having this. Because the other thing she was finding as well with her uh, teenage daughter, she would cook a meal and her daughter would go, no, I don't want to have that. Or, you know, I know I find with my children, what do you want for dinner tonight? Oh, I don't know. And then you've got three different answers coming your way and you're like, oh, I just give up. Here, go and buy takeout. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that. They're all arguing. Um, so that was one that was on her front as far as her meals go for herself and her that, that training for her was. Mm, that's interesting, isn't it? You know, from from my perspective, it's like, okay, well, they're a teenager, so they're just going to eat whatever I put on their plate, um, and there's there's no choice in it. It's just like, and if you don't want to eat it, well, that's okay. Um, go get yourself something else. Yeah. So, but that's just how I operate. Um, I don't. Um, yeah, it it's not about each individual and what each individual uh, wants to eat and I think that's really important as well too um, to think about because so often we 
uh, try to please everybody and we try to give everybody, you know, what they want, but, you know, at the detriment of ourselves. And so we're not taking care of ourselves in that respect because we're making them the priority over ourselves. And of course, it's really, really important that we plan for ourselves as well too. I know that one of uh, the ladies that I was talking to, it wasn't really that we talked about planning, but what I said was each and every day, I want you to spend five minutes with yourself. Five minutes, that was it. Because um, she needed to take that opportunity to spend time with herself because some t sometimes what I find is that we're not quite comfortable with ourselves. We don't like those those moments where we're just spending time alone, time without noise, time with our thoughts as well too. So, um, and I know that you know I'm I'm very comfortable with with myself and my own thoughts, and I do that for at least thirty minutes every every morning when I'm out walking or jogging or whatever I decide to do of a morning. So <clears throat> planning is such an important factor, but I think there's a second stage to that as well too, isn't there, Sal, which is to the follow through. Mm -hmm. So you can plan no amount of planning. But you need, you need yeah. action. <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly right. No amount of planning that you ever do in your life is actually going to give you what you need or what you're after unless you actually take action on what those plans are. So you can put them on, you know, on the planner, you can put them in your diary, you can put them everywhere you want, but unless you take the action to it, then it's just simply not going to happen. And I, look, I know that for myself that, you know, sometimes I plan things and then, it, it just doesn't happen because I just, life life goes on, something gets thrown at me and I end up having to make that the priority. Now, sometimes I think that, that whatever it is, that priority, we ne really need to think about it. Is it something that's really, really important or is it something that um, we're just making it important? So... Have you ever had instances of that where you, you've looked at something and gone, okay, this is really, really important or hang on a minute, this isn't that important? Mm -hmm. and you have? Yes, and you've known me for however many years. I think we're coming up to 20, 28 years. 20, actually. yeah. 28 years. Um, and you'll know, you know, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, um, how important my, you know, my house had to be perfect, mm. absolutely perfect, and that was my priority to the detriment of everything else. So yes. it was, my house was the washing had to always get done first and I had to go um, and, you know, my kitchen had to be done, I had to vacuum and I had to mop and all the beds had to be made and I had yep. to go in and clean all my children's rooms and all this sort of thing. And I've gotten to that point where it's like, well, I'm not doing that anymore. If it doesn't get yeah. done, it doesn't get done because it was mm -hmm. stressing me about stressing me out, and yeah. it wasn't allowing me to do the things that I wanted to do for me, such as getting my workouts done, going for my walk, um, doing my study that I'm doing at the moment, because yeah. everything was everything in my house had to be a priority. Now, yeah. in all honesty, who cares? <laughs> yeah. when my family and friends come over and my house is a mess. Who cares? The house. Why, why am I stressing myself out about the way my house looks? I know it will mm. get done. You know, I mm. don't live like an absolute animal. Um, no. <laughs> but that's when my priorities changed. It wasn't, you know, it's not important. Yeah. It's not important at it's not important. It like um, it is important, but it's not import as important to the expense of everything else that I want to do for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that makes total sense. That um, it, it isn't important to you. So, um, and I'm thinking of uh, one of the lovely young ladies who's just absolutely brilliant in my mastermind. 
Um, and she always poses this question, you know, when I might put something up so we get to share our ideas and our thoughts and, you know, whatever help we want. And um, I, she always poses this question, which is, so what, why does it matter? And it's a really good thing to think about when you've got those distractions in your life. So what, why does this matter? Does it really, is it really that important to me right now? And what, what am I putting on the back burner for it? So, and that's where it comes back down to um, the life, life wheel that we were talking about back in January. It's like, so, so what are the things in your life that are important to you? And, and I would have to say, most of us are going to put health up there, our well-being. It, it's probably going to be first and foremost, we want a good health. Um, probably we're going to put up relationships because we want good relationships. Um, and other than that, you know, there could be a few other things. I don't know. Would you have anything else on your list? No, it's you probably put you on the spot there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's you know, uh, there's probably um, abundance or you know finances or or money or or you know that aspect of it. Um, there could be career as well. Um, so you know, having a, enough to be able to do what it is that you want to do and still support other people as well I you know we don't really need any more than that and no no, no. but they are aspects and I think it comes down to um, Maslow's um, hierarchy isn't it you know the needs of you know we need food we need water we need clothing we need shelter type of things so um, and then what we do is once we have all of those things under control then what we do is is move up to you know the next level of of what it is and so it's always thinking about you know what is important to me and if we think back to what life was like back in caveman days what was important to them was simply surviving um and you know having food on their table and and um, you know running away from the wildebeests and 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 what was important to them was being in their tribes and having those relationships with their people as well too. So yeah, I, I think I sometimes we get very distracted. Yeah, we do. Sorry, Peter. I just wanted to go back to the life where where you were talking about health and relationships. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'd like to pose a question. When people say that health is important to them, do they ever just accept the fact that my health is important to me, but I'll accept the aches and pains of my knees hurt and my shoulders hurt and that's okay? Or do they go deeper and say, go deeper into that question of so what? Why do I now? Why does it matter? Why do I yeah. Care? go deeper yeah. into their life will and say well my health does matter but my health matters because I want to get rid of my aches and pains and my sore knees and my sore shoulders and yes this is what I'm going to do so it'd be interesting to know whether you just accept your health as it is now or at whatever age you are not wanting mm. that mm. yeah it, look it, it poses a really interesting question and I know for some of us that we want our health to be better but we're not prepared to actually do what it takes to actually make the change to make it better so and that could be a lot of fact factors associated with that too you know it could simply be that we don't know how to or it could be that we tell ourselves that we can't do it or it could be that we're scared of making the change because we don't know what it means as well. So there are a lot of um, factors that play out. And because we are all very, very different humans and we all think very differently, how we respond is going to be e extremely different. So, um, and, and you know, 
that when I have uh, and have had injuries in the past, it still doesn't stop me. Um, and even though I might be in a, a level of pain, I, I, there are still other things that I can do. So I don't look at it and go, okay, my, my shoulder's in really bad condition right now. Um, so therefore that pain is going to stop me from doing something. It's not, it, it means that I'm still going to do something. I can still do squats. Um, I can still do, you know, a whole host of different exercises. But that's because my health is a priority to me and I know that I've got to do something every single day. Um, and it reminds me of a conversation that I had with one of our, um, let's call her our most senior client the other day. <laughs> and uh, when we were chatting, uh, she said, I am this age, you know, after all. And I said, I know. And she said, Maybe it's time to just not. And I said, oh, come on, you know what's going to happen if you don't. And she said, oh, I do. And I said, I know. And I said, so what you do is work what you've got with what you've got. I know that you've got all of these ha things happening in your body, but there are still things you can do that are going to keep you mobile. And we all know that once we stop moving, then we stop moving. And we do. So, mm. we absolutely, yeah. And we get afraid to restart. I think, I think sometimes after an injury or an ache and pain, you know, something that might have happened, um, we, we get afraid to restart. Mm. Yeah, we, we, we totally. Mm totally do so ladies just just to recap here we are talking about planning but we've we've sort of like gone well the only way for a plan to actually work for you is that you need to take the action you need to put it in place and so how do you put it in place is the critical thing first and foremost it's to think about what's important to you why have you got that plan in place what does it mean to you and when you can answer those questions and you can keep that in the forefront of your mind then what's what it means is that you're more likely to take action on it so yes life is going to distract us but it's also looking at those distractions and going, are those distractions that I have right now, how important are they to me? Are they something that is really just way down on that list and I shouldn't be doing it? You know, something as simple as, you know, um, sitting there and then just picking up your phone and scrolling through it and before you know it, you've lost a half an hour of your day. So... That's something that can distract you, but it really is something that is not moving you forward. It's taking you away from that plan of what you want your ideal life to look like. And let's face it, ideal lives are always going to change and there's always going to be things that happen. So what we need to do is factor in those things in the plan as well too. So factor in for the fact that, what can happen is you can have those distractions as well too. And think about it when you're taking these steps and you're putting a plan in place, they don't have to be big things. It could just simply be that every morning when I wake up, I'm going to take one minute to write in my journal and go, this is what I'm thankful for. Then as I'm making my bed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do burpees off the bed. So, you know, and I'm going to do five minutes of that. Okay, so I've just taken six minutes and I'm going to do that every single day, Monday to Sunday. I'm going to do that every day. So what I've done is I've created a really simple plan here that I can stick to because I know that what I'm doing is it's it's before I leave my bedroom, it's, it's a routine that I already have in place. So therefore, it's going to make life easy for me. 
Um, and it means I, when I'm consistent with it, it is now part of who I am. So that plan has just planned out. Yes. So any final thoughts, Sel? I did have a final thought, but it was gone because I was focusing on what you were just saying then. <laughs> and I was going to say, when you are planning, ladies, and you mm. are going back to the, to your why, um, be deep about it. Don't just put your generic answers up. Oh, no. I want to lose no, weight no. for my health. No, no, no. What does that no. mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I know yeah. that... And we, we keep coming back to this all the time, Sal. You know, we see this and hear this all the time. You know, I want to improve my health. Well, number one, what does health mean to you? Uh, number two, you know, what does improving your health mean to be mean to you? You know, what does it look like now? Um, and what will it look, look like once you've made those improvements? And why? Just why is that important to you? Because if you don't know why, what's going to happen is you're going to easily get distracted from it. So Yes. We're going to leave it at that. Ladies, we will be back later on in the week uh, with our next live. Um, and if you want more hits, hints and tips or little challenges, we have weekly challenges that are over in our free group, which is women over 50 get active and healthy. And I'll put a link up in the notes so that you can uh, come and join us over there. Thanks for joining me today, Sel. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful Monday, everybody, and Peter. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Yeah, okay. All right, see you all soon. Bye. Bye Take care, Sal. Bye. 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 Bye.